traders and troubadours. My name is TV Sky, and welcome back to the boss designs of Dark Souls. If you remember last time, we found Seath the Scaleless in the Crystal Cave, and then we killed him on the first try, which I, why I was profoundly not anticipating that. But yeah, we've made our way back to uh, Firelink Shrine. We have offered up the soul to the Lord Vessel, as we are hopefully supposed to do. And now... We're trying to figure out where to go next. And I personally am a little bit tempted to head back down to uh, the Valley of the Drakes, um, which I haven't had the courage to explore before because it's full of drakes and they seem pretty powerful. But now with Havel's armor, because <clears throat> I think those were lightning drakes, at least that's what I remember. <clears throat> I also feel like I could probably make it through there. <clears throat> So for the moment, at least, I think uh, we're going to be going to the yeah, the Valley of the Drakes. And I'm going to see where exactly that leads, because I know one end of it ties up to Blight Town, And one end of it ties up to the new Londo ruins down here. But I don't know where the rest of it is. I've never explored it. Like, I was there one time, and then I got killed by an undead dragon. I think that's in the Blight Town episode. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm not going to spend any more time here. I don't want it. I'm, I'm, I'm fine without that in my life. <clears throat> but now, well, there's also the new Londo ruins, of course, which I keep putting them off because they're scary as hell. Wait, is that? Isn't that the guy who was like up at uh, the shrine? Oh, he's hostile now. Okay, he's gone. Oh, he's gone hollow. Okay, well, poor guy. What the? Oh, okay. He can parry my R2. That's a thing he can do. Please don't do it again, though. Well, that's sad. I was wondering where he went. Transient curse. What the heck is that? I think I've seen those before. What do they do? Limb of the victim of a curse. Temporary curse allows engagement with ghosts. The only way to fight back against ghosts who are cursed beings is to become cursed oneself. The safest method, however dreadful, is to cut off an arm of the dead. Okay. So this area features ghosts that can curse you. That's lovely. Okay. First, we'll do the... First, we'll check out the, uh... The... 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 Uh... uh the, the Valley of the Drakes. A name I could not remember for some reason. Hang on. Which one... How many are left? There's... There's the Witch of Isolith. And then there's the Four Kings of New Londo, right? Yeah, so... Since I don't know where the hell the Witch of Isolith is, I can guess that she's probably behind where the Ceaseless Discharge is. Because that's like, that's fire and stuff, and they were associated with that. And also, chaos stuff happens down there. But exactly where, I do not know. Oh, I remember you. You're awake now, I guess. Oh, that's poison, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, all right. Oh, that's a lot of poison. In fact. Okay, out of spells. I guess now I have to fight him for real. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, tough guy. All right. That calls for revenge. What the hell? Okay, now this is personal. Hey, listen, you may have killed me once, and you may have killed me twice, but you will not kill me three times. Honestly, I might try to just kill him with bow's bow and arrow for the rest of it, since he's not gonna move. Haha, <laughs> glorious victory! <laughs> Uh, 3,000 souls. Yeah, that was definitely worth it. Can I walk across this? Yes, good. Okay, good. No falling down, please. Fall down bad. There we go. Neat. Okay. There must be some more stuff down here that I haven't been able to see yet. Oh, you can fly because you have wings. That makes sense. There we go. I should reinforce my Estus Flask, by the way. I found that Firekeeper soul. And I'm still kind of wondering... Like, if the Firekeeper then was another Maiden of Gwyn... Gwyn, maybe. Oh, Gwyn... 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 Of the one... Of the big lady with the tits. 
knock knock anybody home? No? And there isn't like a cleverly concealed lever or something. It's a ladder. I give my life not for honor. Red tear stone ring. And then... Not... Okay, I thought for sure there'd be a lever or something up here. Okay, back we go! Back to Firelink, I suppose. Oh, 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 we could also go to N Orlando. We could go to... We could, I found the... I went to the... Uh, uh, back to the Undead Asylum and got the... Uh, the doll. The peculiar doll. Which surely... I thought must be for the thing in an Orlando. It's not like you can go any further in that direction, right? No. And Blight Town is in there. Don't want to go to Blight Town. But I am a little bit tempted to head to an Orlando and check out that painting. Just anything to delay going to New Londo. <laughs> I don't want to go where the ghosts are. I don't want to fight ghosts. Ghosts are bad. Scary. I'm scared. Mostly. <laughs> I'll be honestly, it's because I know they're the four kings of Anor Londo, and I just imagine a boss battle where I have to fight four guys at the same time, and I just don't want to. Or at least I want to be as strong as possible before I have to. Oh, wait, Firekeeper. Firekeeper soul. Hello, I'm going to give you the soul of one of the other people who are like you, and then you're going to use it to make my Estus Flask better. Thank you. To Anor Londo! Okay, let's go see about that painting. Because I have to, I, it was, it was very big painting and it had like a thing of mechanism doesn't work. And then the doll has a flavor text that says something about being trapped in a painting. So I have to imagine that that's like, collect, connected. Oh man, I'm going to have to deal with those painting guardians again, aren't I? All right. Hello, big painting. Can we do a thing with you now? I hope so. Ooh, this is new. Ooh. <laughs> Let's -a go. Cool. Interesting. Can I leave? <laughs> I don't know. Well, this is very pretty. It's a very different kind of environment. Okay, okay, not so pretty, maybe. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty and peaceful and serene. Oh, no, wait. Hello, there's corpses. Hi. Well, there's a bonfire. Yes, that's good. Need humanity. Well, to kindle it, you mean. Hello, crow or raven, whichever one it is. Oh, hi. A snow environment, though. This is pretty cool. Oh, no. It's one of you. Whatever will I do about it? Oh, he didn't actually die from one hit. Okay, so these are stronger than the ones I used to fight in the Undead Burg, I guess. Whoa! 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 Ugh! Jesus Christ, dude! Ew! Oh, you have got to be shitting me! He spits fire? And there's no way to avoid the toxic. Oh my god. I don't have that many blooming purple moss clumps. Ah, you don't want 
to be toxified. Why do they look like that? Like, why are they inflated? What? Who did that to them? Why? Okay. Damn it. Oh. Okay. Well, okay. I guess we're back here now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. Hi. A what? Why? What? What? Dried finger with multiple knuckles. Shriveled but slightly warm. Why is it still slightly warm? With this many knuckles, surely it cannot belong to anything human. Okay. Because it seems like I'm supposed to be able to find some way to get down there. But at the moment, I'm having less than 100% luck with that. Eh, uh, what the heck then am I supposed to even? Am I just missing something completely obvious? That's usually what happens. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 that's on brand. What the hell? What are you? Harpy? Oh, there she is. Hello. Not a harpy. Oh, wow. You are horrifying. That was just a lady who had a bird's head and a sort of kind of human body, and that was awful. Okay. Well. Ow. Need rear. Oh, that's... Oh, that's gross, dude. I don't know what that is. But I don't like it very much. No, 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 no. So I guess the thing to do is just hit him from up here. <laughs> this is gonna take a while. <laughs> Go get yourselves a book or something. Uh, maybe start a TV show. Like, not, not, not on Netflix. I mean, actually start a TV show for yourselves. Go to film school. Uh, like, get an education. Maybe apply to work at Netflix and then make your own TV show. And it'll probably be done before I'm done killing this guy. Yay! <laughs> A glorious victory over all odds. <laughs> Please don't be a second undead dragon. Please don't be that. Oh, it's just the... It's just the rest of it. And while we're at it... Yeah, nothing to do about it. I'm just gonna have to take the damage, I guess. Oh, that's a long-lasting toxin. God damn. I don't know what that is, but I don't like it very much. Oh, I super don't like it now. God damn. Someone in here is messing with the anatomy of hollows. That much is clear. How many of you are there? Eh. Jeez. This is like a chapel? Hmm. 
I have the master key, so it can't be a simple lock. It must be a specific one. And then we have these. Prisoners will have been tied to these. Or locked up inside them. And then, I guess, spit on stakes, but, you know. Yeah, the environmental storytelling here is pretty bleak. Oh, f off. Who the hell is King Jeremiah? Oh, it's an AI-controlled one. What the he What the hell is he wearing on his head? Is that a crown? Or is he infected with something? He causes bleed. Oh, my God. Of course he does. Ugh. You're creepy. Go away. So that was a guy. What the hell was he wearing on his head? What was that? And how can I get one? <laughs> and I'm out of Estes. I have been poisoned and stabbed out of all of my Estes. Please tell me I can open it from now. And please tell me it leads back to the bonfire. Please tell me it's that door. Yes. At least now I can move forward without having to go through those toxin guys. Oh my god, they're back. Of course they're back. Well, I mean, they make for a pretty good grind spot at least if I wanted to, which I don't. Everything about them is so wrong. Okay, so we can't go through the chapel. We have been through the, to the graveyard. There was that well with the ladder on it. Let's see. What? Are is it wheel skeletons again? It's wheel skeletons again. I bet there's more. Oh! <laughs> I was right. Annex key. Oh, that must be the one for the for the for the for the for the for the um for the uh, uh, shrine place. This is probably a great idea that's not going to go badly at all. Yep, I have definitely not activated anything that's going to kill me. Oh, neat. Okay, so now I have an easy shortcut back to the bonfire. But also a way into the boss arena. That shouldn't be too... Did someone just ring a bell, I guess? It's been a while since that happened. Okay. One day you'll go through the rain. Oh, it wasn't that long of a ladder. Huh. Uh. Okay. Door time. Oh, more toxin. Isn't that just lovely? That's a blacksmith. Uh-oh. Hi! Hello! Hey, you know what would be super cool if you didn't kill me? That would be great! I did not mean to make that many R1 attacks. I did not mean to do that many of them, but I did, and then I died. Okay. Oh, that was dumb. Dumb ways to die. So many dumb ways to die. Dumb 
ways to die. So many dumb ways. Okay, where are they? There they are. One of them, anyway. Two of them! Ugh. A dark ember. Now I guess I just have to get past all the five billion dudes with spears. Who I hope have not followed me into the building. No, no, they're busy doing their own thing. Okay. So, uh... Hi. <laughs> he still swings over my head. <laughs> oh, he has a double swing. Of course he does. <gasps> uh. Uh. Hi? You don't seem hostile. Except you have a very big scythe and a tail. But you don't have a name. So. Who art thou? One oh. of us thou art not. No, I just want to leave. And stepped into this world, plunge down from the plank and hurry home. If thou seekest I. Thine desires shall be requited not. Thou must returneth whence thou came. This land is peaceful, its inhabitants kind, but thou dost not belong. I beg of thee, plunge down from the plank and hurry home. Well, that's interesting. Well, we can take a good look at her, assuming she doesn't get hostile after a certain time. Also, this music is gorgeous. So, I don't know who you are, and I'm gonna have to look you up later. But you are a very tall, very pretty lady. Pretty lady! So, the choice of whether to fight her is up to me, I guess. Like, the game signals really hard <laughs> that I am supposed to attack her in some sense as I enter the room, but... It's not required. So... Here we have the choice that I wish I had had with Sif. Not to fight. Not to attack. And if I kill her... Well, she's not one of the four lords, because she's not the Witch of Isolith, that's for sure. And if I kill her now, it's sort of... In terms of the story, I am becoming that person who killed Sif just for the ring. You know? And I'm taking on the role of the guy who's just wandering around Lord Ren, murdering everything. Even when it is not hostile, because it gives him souls, because it grants them power. Which I think is the meta-narrative of what's going on here, is that much more explicitly than you did with Sif now, you have the option to reject violence. Like, to not to say, I, I really don't want to just kill things for killing them's sake. Fluffy tail she's got there. Lovely. I'm scared to go too close, because she might, I feel like she might get hostile. So she's clearly not human. And we've got that thing going on, um, which is which is a classic in terms of... Like, she's sort of like a princess locked away in a tower. Like, she's locked away at the end of this extended walkway behind a huge fortress full of enemies that are protecting her. And there was that phalanx of the undead wretches that was... Uh, that was protecting a statue of a, of a, of a woman. Which I feel like sort of speaks a little bit to the nature of the world, is that this this world is a little bit like that phalanx of monsters arranged in the protection of 
a woman. So there's a couple of things going on with her. White is a color that's associated with death in Japanese culture, I, I believe. Um, and this lady is all in white. Like, she's got white hair, mostly a white dress, practically white skin. And she's wielding a scythe. So the symbolism of death here... The symbolism of... Endings. And also of a tragedy. Like, certainly the music is telling me that there's a tragedy here. And because she's not hostile, and because for some reason she thinks that this is a nice place to be, full of happy times and good people... Is she blind, maybe? Can she not see? But she is ghostly. She's almost like a ghost that's been trapped. Or some kind of a princess. And the fact that she's clearly human, but also clearly not, is interesting. Because it gives you that impression of... You know, the old stories of intolerant families hiding their, you know, children with birth defects by locking them away. Or the classic story of, of the aristocratic family that's given birth, that's sired a child of some kind of deformity which they then hide away as a mark of shame. I'm getting some feelings of that here. That she is... She's here willingly. She's here by choice, it seems. And she's here to spare someone some kind of embarrassment or to protect some kind of a secret. What that secret is, I don't know. And the trouble I have right now is... Presumably when she dies... She will, uh, drop a soul, or a weapon, or a thing of some kind, and that thing might have more information about her. So in order to get that, I would have to actually attack her. But as I said previously, if I attack her, if I give into it, if I become that... If I become that chosen undead, the, the killer, wandering Lordran, stealing souls feeding them to whatever fire they can find. What kind of a story are we telling? And on the one hand, the point of the series is to fight the bosses and analyze the designs, but on the other hand, I've had plenty of luck analyzing the design without the fights, like the... Mm. But it also feels too unique. It feels a little too delicious to be offered the opportunity to not fight, to do mercy, and then not take it? Like, that feels like... The, the, the Fighting her feels like the boring option to me, actually. That feels like the obvious thing to do. Oh, hello. Is that... The mysterious item once worn by the Senthus King Jeremiah, the legendary exile? Crown, huh? The crown bears high-quality cloth, which is quite soft to the touch, but its bright yellow color stings the eyes, and it's clearly far too big. Yeah, no, no shit. It's got good curse resistance, though. Better than the paladin helmet, actually. <laughs> oh, oh, wow, that looks dumb. Well, we're gonna walk away. We're gonna leave it. Because this is the one and only chance we've had. And I feel like that's also part of the design of the boss. Is that you can say... No. You know? That you have the opportunity not to kill. I'd better not die now. Hey, Homeward Bone, thank you. So can I just re-enter it? Oh yeah, I can, okay. No, wait, wait, no! Why did I do that? 
I was like, oh, I can enter. I'm just going to leave the same way I came in. And it, it took my brain a few minutes, moments to catch up with what my hands were doing. Okay, well, ah, uh, we're going to have to go bother the lady again. Hi, uh, sorry. I think I left my wallet here or something. I think I dropped my keys. Um, so if you could just, I'm just gonna, I'm, you know, just gonna check and have a, a, a look and just, um, I'll be out of your hair in just a minute. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is so awkward. Sorry. Like, that's the lovely thing about Dark Souls. You can always come back and do more murder if you want. She's still there. But I quite like the idea of not killing the boss when it's optional. So long as we can still analyze the design, then I'm actually kind of fine with that. Okay, so that was a bit of an unusual episode. It's the first time we've been given a clear and present, like a, we've been told clearly, this is a boss, you can fight them, they are ready to fight you, and they have like, they, they're, and she's at the end of this level that you have just completed, the natural behavior would be to fight her. And then you have the option just not to. Just leave her there. Just don't, don't hurt her. And she's not the one who will attack you, which we talked about with Sif already. You know, that's still a fight where you are attacked from your perspective. This is different. This is what you enter her room and there's a fog door behind you. And you can just kind of, like, my first instinct was to just rush up to her and attack immediately. Because, oh, the music starts, I'm going through a fog door, I know what this means, this means violence time. But then she doesn't do anything, and I thought, for a second I thought, okay, was the game bugged? Did, a, did something happen here? Because usually there should be, like, a health bar at the bottom and a name and a thing of... But no, it's just that she lives there. That's her home. It's not great, it's full of snow and ice, and she doesn't have any shoes, but... It is her home, and she's not really interested in having a violent confrontation. And so we didn't have one. So I think what I'm going to do for this episode is we're going to throw it over to Future Sky, who is going to try and do a little bit more analysis, both on the painted world itself and on the lady. In the description, you're going to find a link to a straw poll, basically, where you'll be able to vote on whether we should go back and have the fight. I'll leave that up to you or whether we're going to let the analysis be enough on its own, and we will uh, leave her be and let her live. I'm going to leave that one up to you, so that if I have to go and kill her, I don't have to feel like such a jerk about it. <laughs> but also because I think that's interesting. So, over to you, if you just guy. Well, thank you very much, Path Sky. And uh, through some careful, careful Googling, I have managed, without finding out anything about her bio or her background, to find out that this lady's name is Crossbreed Priscilla. A name which immediately begs the question, Crossbreed of what? Well, going by the way she looks, and especially the way she's presented in this bit of concept art, I would say Dragon. And I feel like it might be recency bias that's affecting my brain here, but the only dragon I can think of when I see her, just in terms of her color scheme and what's going on with her design, is, well, Seath. Especially in the concept art where her forehead and her neck are covered in a sort of a series of sort of reptilian-like scales that on her forehead seem to then progress into turning into the hair on her head. Which, from a design perspective, is just a really cool, interesting way to do that particular fusion, but which on a narrative level also emphasizes the merging and melding of human and reptilian or dragon-like characteristics. This is not merely a cute anime girl with some horns and a bit of dragon cosplay. This is a person whose very physical features are a melding between the characteristics of two species. Which, of course, also raises the question of just how much of her outfit is her dress and how much of it is the dragon dragon scale like hair that grows on her body. I would surmise that she is wearing a dress, but that at the very least the fuzzy hair that covers her tail is of the same nature as the hair on her head, that is to say scales that are growing very long from her body in hair like structures. And this is one more way that the design is emphasizing the melding of the two different characteristics of her species, because one object that perhaps more than anything else signals humanity or human-like intelligence and behavior is clothing. It's why all the animals in Zootopia didn't walk around naked except for that one scene, and it's why one of the most universal and indeed most problematic signifiers of being uncivilized is to be naked. 
So with Priscilla, not only are her physical features blending the reptilian with the human, even her clothes, the signifier of humanity, is blending in with her dragon-like nature, raising the question of whether the tail is a tail or merely a part of her outfit, and similarly raising the question of whether she is wearing clothes or whether these are simply the natural growths that come from the scales on her body. Now, it is a little bit boring to me that all of these interesting design decisions are being applied to what is, nonetheless, still just a generic pretty anime girl design. Beauty, of course, is not a character design flaw, but it is a feature that a lot of character designs tend to default to. Not because it adds anything to the design, or because it's interesting, or because it tells part of the story, but just because that's just, let's just make it pretty, and I don't know, let's not even think about it. And so, maybe that's not the case with Priscilla. Maybe there is a serious consideration going into, okay, she needs to actually be kind of pretty and kind of adorable, and she needs to look kind of like a young girl so that the player will hesitate and feel sympathy for her, or empathize with her, or something along those lines. Maybe, but the trouble is there's so many video games and there's so much design where that kind of serious thought process doesn't go into the designs. They just default to pretty girls to the exclusion of everything else. And so it's, statistically, it's really hard to tell whether the decision to make a female character beautiful is intentional or just the default because they didn't bother to think of anything better. But if we're giving them the benefit of the doubt, presumably Priscilla was rendered to look like a very large, but nonetheless mostly identical physically to a young human girl, is a decision that's specifically designed to elicit sympathy from the player. Because one of the character decisions that you make when you encounter Priscilla is whether or not to attack her. Because when you enter her room, the first thing you hear is boss music starts playing, as it has many times before, and you've gone through a fog door, and in front of you, there's a giant lady with a big big, black, dangerous-looking scythe, your immediate reaction is going to be, holy crap, attack it as fast as possible before it kills you. And if Priscilla had looked more overtly monstrous, probably most players would just attack her immediately without actually thinking through the situation that they're encountering. And the situation you're encountering is quite interesting, actually, because you enter this room to a beautiful lady in a white dress who simply does not seem interested at all in attacking you, and in fact, who asks you to leave, telling you that this is a nice, good, pleasant world inhabited by good people, and she would just like to be left alone, please, because you do not belong there. Which is interesting because it's actually a horrifying hell world full of corpses and mutants that try to murder you at every turn and everything is broken down and decayed and destroyed and she's not in fact residing in a nice, you know, pleasant, comfortable room but at the top of a cold, dark, lonely tower in the middle of nowhere. Now, this implies either that Priscilla is seeing a very different world than you do, that she's literally living in a world that is different from what you experience, and that your experiences of everything in that world trying to destroy and expel you is the painted world trying to reject you, trying to protect Priscilla from you. And that's an idea that's kind of emphasized by the phalanx of mutants that we meet earlier. All of them crowded around the statue of a woman forming this shield and spear wall, desperately trying to protect her, which might in some sense be a metaphor for what the painted world itself is doing for Priscilla. It might be that in her version of the painted world, everything is actually nice and pleasant and just an overall wonderful place to be. And the only reason you're not seeing that is because the world is treating you like an immune system treats a virus. The other implication, of course, is that Priscilla just doesn't have the frame of reference to understand how miserable her world is, that she has lived for so long in this painted world that she interprets it as a nice place to be because she simply doesn't know or understand how things could be any better or any nicer. In which case you could consider her relationship with the painted world a form of essentially Stockholm Syndrome. And that brings to mind the discussion that I had while we were circling around her in the game that a family hiding away the misbegotten or born out of wedlock or illegitimate or born with birth defects child by locking them up in a basement or in some faraway place where they can't be embarrassing to anyone, the child of some illicit affair that a nobleman had with a scullery maid or worse, a child born without the necessary physical features to be a suitable heir for the family dynasty. 
So again, if there is a connection with Seath, then one might imagine that she is either his precious treasure that he attempted to hide away inside the painting of the painted world where no one would ever be able to get her, or she is his shameful secret. Something he was so terrified of other people finding out about that he created an entire pocket dimension to house her. All of this, of course, assumes that there is some kind of connection with Seath, or indeed that Priscilla is a crossbreed with a dragon. Who knows, she could be a crossbreed with anything. I just think she looks pretty reptilian, and then there's the white colors, which tells me Seath the scale is, but uh, I guess we'll see. Depending anyway, on you guys. As I said earlier, down in the description below, there's a link to a straw poll that you can go, you can click on, you can vote on whether you think we should go back and murder Priscilla. And I just want to be clear that that's what we're going to be doing. If we go back and we attack her, it is murder. It is not self-defense. It is not, oh my god, I came into this room and there was a scary lady with a scythe. I overreacted. No, no, we're making the active decision that the chosen undead that I am playing in this version of Dark Souls is a bloodthirsty murderer who kills anything and everything that he comes across in a quest for power. A soul-eating monster that traverses Lordran, destroying everything, consuming everyone perhaps in the vain hopes of restoring the world to just one more age of fire. Hey, thank you very much for watching another episode of the Boss Designs of Dark Souls. I'm leaving it up to you monsters, you bloodthirsty bastards, whether Priscilla lives or dies. So make sure to click on that link and make the right decision. Also, yes, I did record a full cover of Snake Eater from Metal Gear Solid 3, specifically so I can use it for gags when we're climbing up long ladders in these ridiculous videos. If you want to listen to the full song, well, it's over on my newly created second channel. Now, the second channel is where I'm going to be putting stuff like this music cover that I'm using for this video, but also you can find the VODs and the full uploads of the various streams that I do on the channel, all archived neatly over there. And I would, in fact, like to ask you all to go over there and subscribe and also to watch at least a few of those VODs so I can get some watch time going on that channel because I would very much like to be able to also monetize that channel, which I can't do right now. So if you have a few hours and you want to re-experience some of the streams that I've made, you know, you can go it's over there and I do stuff and I have fun and you'll probably enjoy it, I hope. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, of course, click the like button, subscribe button, comment button, bell icon, yada, 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 all the YouTube stuff, because that's how the lights stay on on a YouTube channel. If you want to support the channel more directly, I do have a Patreon where you can sign up for a monthly subscription of pretty much anything that you want. If you don't want to do a monthly subscription, I also have some just some tip jars that you can find links to down in the description, and they are also very helpful. As I say at the end of my videos, even just one or two dollars can mean the same as thousands, if not tens of thousands of views for content creators like me on the internet. So whether it's me or it's someone else, if you have a content creator that you like, please consider supporting us directly with even very small donations because they matter a lot more than you think. Of course, if you can't or you just don't want to do any direct donations, believe me, I get it, money is tight all over. I'm just happy that you've watched the video this far. If you haven't enjoyed the video, of course there's a dislike button down below. No, 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 not, not below the video. Down below, below the edges of your perception, below the laws of physics, below the foundations of the world, there is a dislike button. If ever it should be clicked, may God have mercy on our souls.